Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Arrested and released 14 times, a chronic offender's journey through BC's correction system exposes vital gaps. Special counsel mentions Trump's gun purchase and Milley threat in push for gag order. America is an empire of lies, China says, after information manipulation report. A multicultural society without proper integration is doomed to fail. Original letter from Explorer announcing discovery of America goes on sale for first time. Arrested and released 14 times, a chronic offender's journey through BC's correction system exposes vital gaps. The Globe and Mail A man in Vancouver, Canada, who has been convicted of 14 random assaults over the past decade, has been released from jail on the condition he stays at a homeless shelter, despite his repeated failures to comply with probation conditions. Mohamed Majidpour, 36, was released after serving a year in pretrial detention. Since his release, he has not reported to his probation officer, but was arrested in September for the breach of his probation. The Salvation Army's Belkin House Shelter, where he was supposed to stay, claims it has no record of Majidpour being there. It is unclear whether he has adhered to the other 13 conditions of his probation. The case has highlighted the systemic gaps in the justice system that allow a small number of people with complex mental health issues and addictions to commit crimes repeatedly. The Attorney General for the Province of British Columbia, Nikki Sharma, has said that Majid Paul's case is evidence of the failure of the system to provide adequate mental health care. Advocates say that the conditions under which released prisoners are discharged leave them vulnerable to returning to homelessness. Majidpour's most recent assault conviction was for attacking a 20-year-old university student. He also pleaded guilty to setting fire to a car and stealing clothing, and was sentenced to one day in prison on 2 August. He has breached bail and probation conditions seven times. Special counsel mentions Trump's gun purchase and Milley threat in push for gag order. The Independent the office of special counsel Jack Smith mentioned both former President Donald Trump seemingly threatening the life of recently retired Joint Chiefs Chairman General Mark Milley and his visit to a South Carolina gun store in a Washington, D.C. legal filing pushing for a gag order. Prosecutors have been trying for some time to place limits on Mr. Trump's public speech to stop him from threatening possible witnesses or tainting the pool of possible jurors. America is an empire of lies. China says, after information manipulation report. South China Morning Post China has accused the US of being the empire of lies after a report from the US State Department accused Beijing of manipulating global media through censorship and covert purchases of foreign news outlets. The report claimed that China was plowing billions of dollars into information manipulation efforts. In response, the Chinese Foreign Ministry said that the report was false information and that the US State Department was the source of false information and cognitive warfare. China has been trying to increase the global footprint of its government-controlled media in recent years to combat negative images of the country. A multicultural society without proper integration is doomed to fail. Telegraph the author discusses the recent conflict between Home Secretary Suela Braverman and Chancellor Rishi Sunak regarding the statement that multiculturalism has failed in Britain. The author suggests that this conflict may be due to a semantic mix-up rather than a substantive difference of opinion. Braverman's criticism was targeted at those who have failed to adapt to the social norms of their new land and instead choose to live in isolated parallel worlds. The author argues that maintaining a sense of national identity and a cohesive social life is difficult if communities within a country are living in cultural ghettos. The author then reflects on the United States' experience with multiculturalism and assimilation. The United States was founded on the principle that people from diverse backgrounds could live together in a unified country. The author explains that early America had no welfare provision for immigrants so they relied on their ethnic communities for support. American education was designed to turn the children of immigrants into proud Americans, emphasizing national identity and values. However, the author notes that contemporary education in both Britain and the United States focuses on the negative aspects of history, which may make it difficult to persuade migrants to embrace the country's culture and values. 
Original letter from Explorer announcing discovery of America goes on sale for first time. The Guardian. A rare 1493 Latin translation of a letter written by Christopher Columbus is expected to fetch up to £1.2 million, $1.5 million, at a Christie's auction. The letter, addressed to Royal Treasurer Louis de Santangel, detailed Columbus' voyage to the Indies and his discovery of numerous islands. The letter, printed on an early printing press, is regarded as the first report of a voyage that had a significant impact on the modern world. The document has been in a private Swiss collection for nearly a century. Hong Kong flag carrier Cathay Pacific seals cut price deal on 32 new Airbus jets. South China Morning Post. Cathay Pacific has finalized a deal to buy 32 aircraft from Airbus worth $4.66 billion. The airline said it had purchased the planes for the basic price of $4.66 billion but had negotiated significant price concessions. The aircraft will be used to expand Cathay Pacific's and its budget arm HK Express's fleets and will mostly be used on routes to mainland China and elsewhere in Asia. Should CEOs comment on politically contentious topics? Wall Street Journal CEOs in the US are under increasing pressure to take a stance on controversial political and social issues. While some argue that taking a public stand can alienate customers or employees, Ronnie Chatterjee, a professor of business and public policy at Duke University, believes that taking a stand on issues that impact their business is an important part of being an effective leader. Many of the most controversial political and social issues of our time are also critical business issues. CEOs will also continue to be motivated to speak out by their own employees and consumers. A recent report by communications firm Edelman found that 6 out of 10 employees said they wouldn't work for an organization that failed to speak out against racial injustice. Forget a dating profile, this app says it just needs your face. Wall Street Journal SCI Match is a dating app that uses artificial intelligence, AI, to find users' perfect romantic match. The app runs photos of users' faces through an algorithm to determine their personality traits and then recommends potential mates who have compatible characteristics. However, some relationship experts doubt that AI can effectively play matchmaker. SCI Match currently has around 5,000 active monthly users and is free to use, although users can pay for extras such as being paired with someone who resembles their celebrity crush. The app's developers claim that their algorithm factors in both personality similarities and differences when making matches. Dear viewers, I hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there in the vastness of the six dimensions. I'm Dr. Six, your trusty observer of all things strange and fascinating in this world. Today, I bring you a mix of news stories that range from the serious to the intriguing. So, let's dive right in. First up, we have the case of Mohammed Majidpour, a man who has been convicted of 14 random assaults over the past decade. Despite his repeated failures to comply with probation conditions, he was released from jail on the condition he stays at a homeless shelter. But guess what? The shelter claims they have no record of him being there. It's a classic case of the justice system's gaps and failures, allowing individuals with complex mental health issues to slip through the cracks. Moving on, we have the special counsel's push for a gag order on former President Donald Trump, mentioning his alleged threats towards General Mark Milley and his visit to a gun store. They're trying to limit Trump's public speech to prevent him from interfering with potential witnesses or jurors. It's like trying to keep a lion in a cage, isn't it? Next, we have China accusing the US of being the empire of lies after a report claimed that China manipulates global media through censorship and covert purchases of foreign news outlets. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. China has been trying to increase its influence through government-controlled media, but they're not fooling anyone with their claims of false information. In a thought-provoking piece, the author discusses the issue of multiculturalism in society. They argue that without proper integration, a multicultural society is doomed to fail. Living in cultural ghettos and failing to adapt to social norms can lead to a lack of cohesion and identity. The author looks at the American experience and how early immigrants relied on their ethnic communities for support, 
but contemporary education may be hindering the assimilation process. Food for thought, indeed. In a historical find, A rare 1493 Latin translation of Christopher Columbus' letter announcing his discovery of America is up for auction. This document, printed on an early printing press, is regarded as the first report of a voyage that changed the course of history. It's a glimpse into the past and a reminder of how far we've come. On a more modern note, Cathay Pacific has sealed a deal to buy 32 new Airbus jets. The airline managed to negotiate significant price concessions, which is a win for them. These new aircraft will help expand their fleets and strengthen their presence in mainland China and Asia. So, get ready for more flights and more options. Shifting gears, we have a discussion on whether CEOs should comment on politically contentious topics. Some argue that it can alienate customers or employees, while others believe it's an important part of being an effective leader. In today's world, where business and politics often intersect, CEOs are finding themselves under increasing pressure to take a stand. It's a delicate balancing act, but it seems like speaking out is becoming the norm. And finally, we have the interesting case of SCI Match, a dating app that claims to find your perfect match using AI. By analyzing users' facial features and running them through an algorithm, the app determines their personality traits and recommends potential mates with compatible characteristics. It's like finding love in the digital age, but whether AI can truly play matchmaker is still up for debate. That wraps up our news for today, folks. I hope you found these stories as fascinating as I did. Now, it's your turn to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on the justice system's gaps, CEOs, and political commentary? or even finding love through AI. Share your ideas and questions with me, Dr. Six, and let's explore the six dimensions together. Stay curious, stay adventurous, and stay tuned for more from the world of Six Degrees. Yours in exploration. Dr. Six. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.